was from residential zoning to a residential zoning, the only difference being the addition of manufactured housing, that that wasn't a problem. And that, that statement was made at the meeting. So. And we need to set the date for the third. We already have um, um, a public hearing for uh, Chuck Holland set up at 7.05, so I figured we'd do this one at 7.10. And uh, if you could approve that, uh, that would be great. So a motion to set public hearing for Wendy Gap for zone request for October 3rd at uh, 7, 10 p.m. Is that, is that the date we're looking at? Yes, yes sir. Mm -hmm. Stacy makes that motion. Second. Roll the second. Any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor, raise your hand. And because it's totally unrelated, it's going out in the same direction, a couple of uh, citizens have su suggested that you head out to Depot Street Extension, you hit a 35 mile hour zone in the middle of two 45 mile hour zones or whatever, but Sam's agreed that we go ahead and talk contact the DOT to straighten that out. So, okay. It's just one of those little quirks when you drive out the road. Mm -hmm. it, is a, it should be reversed. <coughs> we, yeah. I believe the town board yeah. reversed that um, and that's DOT's road and signage and we reversed the town board reversed their position on that to raise the speed limit to take that lowered section out yeah i'm surprised it's all that way because it was what a year ago I thought we had done something. Yeah. 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 well we we gave the ot permission i'll check with uh, i'd say somebody who got it Okay. Designation of voting delegate for the NC League meeting. Who all signed up to go? Me. Four? Four. Here's your list of candidates. Yeah, there you go. How many, how many uh, by delegate singular, does that just mean one? One yeah, voting no, delegate and a and the all All right, you four get yourself together. I, I did it last year. 
land on the extended airport, and hopefully we're hoping they'll hang them down there. And so that's kind of plain that that's something that's been kind of bubbling to the surface. So we need to give you the authority to make a motion or just a thought. Well, to make an application to the rules. So for our for our minutes, Summer, what is it? One more time then. What 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 are you asking the board to do? To authorize me to get with WK Dixon and make an application to the rural center for basically matching money for the water and the hydraulic center. I like that motion. I'll say. Any discussion? On that or again? Next question before we leave. <clears throat> when are we going to start looking at a secondary water supply? Well, that, that gets into one of the, <coughs> the study is the first step toward moving toward the I haven't seen this kind of coming down here and changing that. Uh, that would be one of the things that they would address. Yeah. 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 Okay. Number six, the keynote. Discussion of non-profit funding pool applications. <coughs> then I've done my job. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Uh, do I understand it correctly that the agencies applying have to be a 501 c three? They don't have to be, but that is one of the key ways for the, when you apply to be a 501c3, you've already applied as a nonprofit in whatever state you're in, and that involves saying, making a promise that none of this is ever going to anybody's pocket, essentially, that this is always going to be for, you know, not a nonprofit and not for anybody to keep. So it's a really good way for us to know that <coughs> this won't be misappropriated to, to private hands. The reason I was asking that is that the Smoky Mountain Marine Corps, that's not a 501c3, it's an employee identification. And I don't, they seem to be incorporated under Chapter 55D, which I don't know, Mr. Mayor, if you're, I don't know what that is. I really am not sure. It's not going to matter. Didn't they state in there that they were going to apply, but they just had got around to doing it? Yeah. Well, the, the EIN said if you want to receive a rule, yeah. uh, I didn't see anything with that applied. So I was I was thinking we were limiting it pretty much to 501 so already. It's, yeah. it's, a good, it's a good practice too, I think. Uh, before we get deep into these applications, there's been a late a late entry in the race. I told her to show up and give her a minute to so, Karen Style Enter. See you brought your bodyguard with you. I did. Come on. <laughs> While I'm handing these out, I'm currently the county president, or uh, if you want to say county, I guess that's the way to put it. I am currently the president of the Macon County Community Foundation, which is a state part of a statewide affiliation with the North Carolina Community Foundation. We do grant making or grant uh, we get grants I guess that's the best way to put it um, we have a statewide organization in Raleigh that is our backbone we're one of 60 affiliate organizations in 60 counties in North Carolina we have a unrestricted fund which we give grants out of in the last couple of years they've then between thirteen and sixteen thousand dollars a year, we're allowed to give five percent of our unrestricted fund out every year. We also have a Macon County Disaster Relief Fund within our umbrella, and we also have twenty-eight now uh, endowment scholarships and um, gift funds. We have started in Macon County the Macon County United Gift Fund. We have modeled it after Swain Counties, which has been in existence for five years and has been extremely successful. Last year they raised $40,000. They had 17 countywide nonprofit organizations which were part of that. We received 
restrict our designated and non-designated funds within that umbrella. We are also able to receive matching contributions from organizations. Say an employee at Caterpillar makes a contribution to the United Gift Fund, he would also be able to qualify for Caterpillar's matching gift fund. Currently, we have, I think, 12 organizations that have applied to be a part of our United Gift Fund this year. Several within that list, you'll notice, are not in the town of Franklin. They are county-wide. Um, we do require an application, just like a normal grant process. We do ask them what, the, what they're going to use the funds for. We do have in place a follow-up procedure that does require them to prove to us that they do use the funds for what the stated purpose is. What we were asking the town tonight is to consider us as your community funding source. Rather than you having to make those decisions as to who you want to give this money to, to be a contributor to the United Gift Fund, and let us funnel the money for you. You do not have to give all of the money you have available. You can give part. You can also, and we would expect you probably to tell us that we want you to only give money to the organizations which are inside the town of Franklin. And we're fine with that. We will do whatever you ask us to do with that money. You were talking about 501c3s and Smoky Mountain Marine Corps League. We would have the ability to verify whether those organizations are qualified to receive money as far as nonprofit status is concerned. Um, we do have and have given to organizations that are not 501c3s but are qualified as nonprofits under the section, different sections of the 501c nonprofit status with the IRS. <coughs> You'll see that in our list such as Smoky or Second Mile Ministries, which is a qualified nonprofit religious organization. So um, I'm here to answer any questions. We have a very, very diverse group on our board. We have also asked several residents within the county from different segments to be a part of the United Gift Fund board. They will work underneath our umbrella, our board. We have a, uh, been very, very successful in what we've done for the last approximately 20 years. Um, Ms. McCray has been a part of this before, has been one of our board members. Um, we have the ability to be um, very bipartisan. We have a wealth of experience within our organization. And uh, we've been able to avoid any conflicts of interest in the past. So I'll entertain any questions. And how long has this, uh, this uh, group been operating? The Macon County Community <coughs> Foundation, our actual affiliate, has been in existence for about 20 years. So it's the same one that's Okay. We've been here, we've been around, and we just gave out $13,000 in July. And this this gift fund will kick off on the 27th. We have an open house at the Whistle Stop, and all of you are my welcome guests that evening if you'd like to come. Uh, <coughs> and I think we've, we've got a proven, a proven track record. And, uh, once a year. Pardon? Two yeah. years. We, we give the grants normally once a year. We have, we have asked for people that are part of our normal grant process, and most of those grants never exceed $1,500. They're smaller grants because we have limited funding. We try to accommodate those that do apply. They may not get 100% of what they ask for, but we take those applications, and then our grant committee brings the recommendations to the board, and we distribute those funds in July. These funds will be distributed in February, and our camp major campaign will run countywide from the 1st of October to the end of December of this year. Next year, we're hoping to run from September 15th to December 15th. 100% of our money will go out 
we have contributions that have been made specifically to cover any cost associated with this. So there would, you know, if you gave a dollar, a dollar's going out. Do you do the distribution for the Lincoln County Fund? Do we? Yes. We make the we make the suggestions, and then the state office is the one that actually handles the money. I mean, I mean like we have this uh, <coughs> community building for Franklin, and the county has one. Right. Do you get the county's money? We're working on that as uh, well. <laughs> if I if I can add, this is not us asking for your funds. Yeah. It's as asking, offering you the ability to give those funds to this organization to, to then redistribute them. Um, the United Gift Fund is new this year. Swain's been doing theirs for a year or two. This is an alternate to our normal uh, gift, gift giving campaign. We will still hold that one. That's your, you guys are familiar with the uh, Mystery Dinner Theater. That's the purpose of why we do that, is to create those funds that we can then turn around and give back. This is an alternate to that. As we're starting, we don't know how successful it's going to be. We're trying to, we don't know how big that pool is going to be. If we can get that pool big enough, the number of applications will increase and increase and increase and increase with years to come. As we stand right now, we're limited to 12 applicants. That's all we can do. We don't know what's going to be in that fund. The anticipation is, is that they give up their funding from our unrestricted fund, the Mystery Dinner Theater proceeds type thing. Um, they're going to get in this instead. They can't do both. So if they get in this instead, the thinking is, is they'll have a bigger pool to attract from that will help them. That will then free up the monies from the unrestricted fund for other nonprofits that, you know, for littler amounts. We've given out grants from $100 to about 1500 That's what we're not what we're hoping for. We're anticipating a lot more when we do that. Yeah, this is not our group asking for your money. It's just a matter of a they're kind of a holding. Tom is next year's president. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's also been our grant chair mm -hmm. and assistant chair for the last couple of years. So he. But we are also governed by the North Carolina Community Foundation, which is our parent organization. Mm -hmm. There are controls upon controls to make sure that we are recusing ourselves, that there is any potential conflict of interest or anything like that. We've got, as you can see, the group of board members that we have and the group of people that we have involved in the separate United Gift Fund, which is a subsidiary, if you will, of the Maine County Community Foundation. Group, good group of people. You know them all. You know 95% of the names on there if you don't know them all. Uh, no ulterior motives. It's something to give back to what we can to the community. So we, we give uh, a check and then you all restrict the monies that the town gives to go to those charities and organizations which are located within the town and you fund them from that one and then that frees up more money that you all have that you would be able to give to the county and other ones because of not having to use less in town. And yeah, the idea is it's effectively funded out of town. The idea is that we also get funded from the county for countywide things. We get funded from private individuals and, and uh, homeowners, that's better, landowners that don't live here that want to give back to this community because they love this community. But we have that extra level of obligation to be sure that the money we give. We'll give we would be more than willing to... I know you would, but effectively what that would do then would, would cover you $1,500 or whatever up to the max for the ones in town. I and mean, then that would, you see what I'm saying, in the end, I don't know whether that would help us as much as us giving directly to them and then them also getting a grant from you. I don't know that, I'm not saying that it's effectively going to help anybody other than the fact it's a pooling of interest. And that when we work together and that we would be able to, you would be able to say, okay, we don't have to have this group come to us every year we're going to put X amount of money in the community funding pool designated for the nonprofits that apply there within the town of Franklin. And you can tell us, we don't want that organization, we want this organization. And we would put the funds in the same pool and then distribute effectively. You would not have to make the decisions that you're having to make now. That would be taken out of your hands. But we would have to be extraordinarily careful with that. And I, it, it, on, on the surface, it seems like it ought to be just that simple. That mm -hmm. We know you're good people, and, and we do, and we know that you're going to be responsible and make sure that this mm -hmm. money only goes to, to nonprofits and serving, you know, Franklin residents. But we would have to have 
pretty regular review, or at least if you do it on a yearly basis, it's going to have to have a yearly presentation of these are the ones we gave it to. These, this is why we know That's they're all Town Franklin. This is, you know, all of the, these are your funds, and these are going to the Franklin. I, I'm not so so troubled about. I mean, I'm, I don't know that nobody could make a claim that you were effectively funding other mm -hmm. you know, yeah. areas. If you, somebody could probably make that claim. Somebody probably could, but the reporting is is very, very, very um, outright, and you know we have no problems with. Uh, I have no problems with any one of you. At, you know, if you, somebody wants to sit in on me well, meetings all, or anything all of, of that nature, in, in the back door, select the. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. You could sit in as ex officio member. With that, I. And I agree with that, Mr. Mayor. I, I would be much more comfortable to, to take a look at this and see. I mean, I don't imagine, and you, you all may know through your parent organization, are there other municipalities like Franklin that are yes. doing it this way? Yes. Well, help us learn a little more about the it. The town of Brighton City does do Because there's some things I'd want to ask them about how exactly they go out. The only um, thing that I know that they have done, and this is just from the conversations with the girl that has been with, um, I can't think of her name right now. She's with the United Community Bank on the Plain Board. She said the only thing that, that they have run into is uh, with the library requiring uh, to show on their records count or town funding. So portion of the United, you know, the United Gift Fund money and the town, the community funding pool, the town gives to the library and the rest of the money gets to the community funding pool. So that, that's the only thing I know for a fact. But, um, you know, I'll be glad to, we are only, Wayne is making the only two that has the United Gift Fund in the state right now. So it is it is starting to spread. And they did raise forty thousand last year and were able to get forty thousand out. So what's the five percent rule? The five percent rule is on our unrestricted funds in order to ma maintain perpetuity. I hate that word, I can never get it out. Um, they're limited to giving out five percent of their unrestricted fund balance, the average over the past five years. And that hand that flows all the way down to our scholarships and our endowments and our, our you know funding except for the gift fund. So that way that money stays there and it's there from now on. You wouldn't want us to raise, you know, have as much money as we've got and give it out every year because next year it may not be there. Jim, are you saying that like say care net or the hospital mm -hmm. or whatever, we give you the money and for them. Mm -hmm. So from then on, that place would know that they are no longer to come to us from now on. They have to go to you? If that's the way you want to set it up, yes. Well, I think we would have to make that statement at some time in the future. Mm -hmm. If we decide in the future to go this route, we would have to make that decision. That is one of the, we sent the letters out. That is one of the things that we have done with the organizations that applied this year. Um, we told them that if they became a part of the United Gift Fund, that they would not be able eligible for our grant process next year, our normal grant process. They would have to choose one or the other. And we do, we get requests for several thousands of dollars, and then we'll get a request from like the Nantahala Community Development Club for $300, you know, to, to paint or to do something, you know. And it's the smaller guys that really need our normal grant process. Some of the larger organizations like CareNet or Second Mile that need more funding um, would benefit more from the United Gift Fund because people can make countywide, and we're stressing countywide, we are mailing letters to all non-resident property owners and saying, okay, you've got an investment in Macon County, it may not just be in the town of Franklin, but you have an investment in Macon County. And what this organization here does benefits the entire county and 
you know, you've got property here. You know, you need to consider us in the same fashion you would another non profit organization. And that's the route we're going. This may happen on Tom's watch. It ain't gonna happen on your watch. Oh. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> I just appreciate the opportunity sure. to, to nice come and, and, and to talk to you and to, to kind of you know put that in the back and I'll be I'll be glad to work with Tom and work with you guys. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Looking forward to next year. Well, Thank you. All right. <coughs> Back to the drawing board. That's right. <laughs> take the 10 that have submitted the request, it looks like that eight of those 10 uh, probably do not meet all the criteria. Some of the others may not meet it also, but there's two of them that stands out that, that does not meet the criteria. And if you add up their amounts, limited to $5,000 maximum, we're at $37,500, which is $2,500 over the contract. So one by one, how much reserve is it? We got forty thousand in the tank, right, Sam? We're gonna keep five or ten thousand in the third. Yeah, I'd like to get as much money out there as we can to the people that need it. And I think five thousand dollars is a is a good amount to set aside for future emergency requests. Yeah, and if we have a big emergency, we know who we can go to. <coughs> so then we're looking at thirty five thousand dollars. If anybody such as Harold's got two picked out he wants to talk about who he thinks probably don't qualify, go ahead, Harold. Well, the one that, uh, that Bob Zarr already brought up, the Smoky Mountain Marine Corps, uh, they seem not to, to meet necessarily that criteria now, but I would encourage them if they got the title and see in the future to, to reapply. Uh, also, the, the Mountain Mediation, yep. you know, that. That organization, I read through their stuff. I mean, they cover a, a six county area, and I'm sure there's maybe someone in Franklin that they may help. But I don't think it's, it's not as much as the other organizations that are strictly doing a lot in Franklin. So those, are, those are the two that I would probably dismiss to start with. And there may, there may be some others. I've read through these and looked at the stuff that John says on what some of the requirements are. And it looks like, for the most part, the rest of them meet most of the criteria. Uh, even though there's, in some cases, there's not specific words to go to. It looks like there's, you know, there's five thousand dollars out of a million dollar project. I don't know that they would miss what the project was totally to the cost. It would be nice if we, if in the future, if we limit this to the you know, specific <coughs> need or use. You know, where we would know, like, if they needed to replace their air conditioners. You know, then we're funding it to replace that. We don't really necessarily have all that criteria right now. But I think that by this time next year, we ought to develop a little bit more criteria. Anybody, uh, I, I, I pulled out mountain radiation and smoky mountain. Anybody arguing or something? All right, I'll bring it up. Scotty's Parkins Museum, 5125 for a t-shirt for King. I think this is something that should be sent on to the Tourist Development Authority because that is almost totally 100% tourist related. The second one I have is Angel Medical Center. Uh, I feel like uh, in many ways our hospital is now under the umbrella of uh, Mission, Memorial Mission, and I just, I just do not see this request meeting the uh, public meeting. Those are the two I have. The only thing I, I would say about Angel Medical, um, I guess I don't know how many members are still in the house at that point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and the part, in fact, I'm told is for the fundraising is for this particular, uh, the outpatient medical what this outpatient medical center does, it has over a year's time, they have between 17 and 18,000 patient contacts. 
I have a, uh, another problem. Uh, I have a problem with public money is going into an organization whose meetings are not open to the public and in the application of marked confidential. I have a problem with that. No, 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 no. Yes, sir. You're saying what about? I'm saying that I have problems with public money is going into an organization that is not open to the public. That their board of meetings, as it says in here, are confidential. And uh, I cannot buy into that. Sorry. I think that they meet, I've argued this for a long time, that they're going to accept government money. They're subject to the open meetings law. I think when somebody comes in here with the money stress, they're not worried about it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not um, talking about care. I'm talking about the organization that is closed to the public. I don't think anybody uh, would deny that the Angel Medical Center is, is the heart of this community. Mm -hmm. My one thought that I would put in, though, is that their budget is just by its very nature so overwhelmingly dwarfs all the rest of these applicants. You know, we give them the same bank for a buck if we put X number of dollars in a hospital versus arts council or other places. I mean, this, you know, it's balancing act, because obviously it is. But that's the one, that's the one thought I have just to throw out. I'd like us to see about the engagement of about 3,000. About three thousand for Angel Medical. Well, I don't want to be the one going into the room. What I want to do, what I, what I want to do here is, uh, we we talked a little bit about Angel. Does anybody in theory have uh, any uh, the Arts Council? That's another one. I think to qualify for TVA funds, quite frankly, they might. Uh, they might. Well, Bob, you didn't mention Angel Medical. Mm -hmm. We kind of hashed that out. Sure. Then you talked about the Talk Scottish Partners Museum. Yeah, I just, when we've got people out here that are hurting, I can't see putting tax money into a t shirt machine. Don't uh, you guess it's whatever it takes to keep the doors open? Well, I mean, I is that not what the goal is? is yeah, have a, but the thing I mean, is, there's a, there's a different door they can open to get the money. Well, maybe they, maybe they need more than one door. door. Yeah. Maybe well, they need more than one door. Yeah. I think, though, I, I, that the museum, one of, one of the museums in our community, they're very important. And mm -hmm. the only thing I have a question about, if that's necessary, that $5,000 we're talking about for the t-shirt machine, yes, I do have problems with that. But, because we gave them some money for the t-shirt machine, which is mm -hmm. And, but I still think that they could use I have no problem with that, sis. My problem is with the physical uh, t-shirt machine that is creating a product that could be in competition with our other businesses. Hey, ma'am. Farrell touched on something that don't we have somewhere in the fine print that I mean, we generally not allow this money to go into wages and payroll, but required it to be used for something a little bit. It, one of the old standards, I guess from the last cycle, was that it was not to be used for direct operating costs. It was supposed to be used either for a one-time specific task not or, a or to be put into a specific program not involving salary. Is that, is that, are we still, are we still on board with that? Because if we are, we got to firm that up. So we could designate it into the verbiage to say where, if we give it to the clerk to see what we want it to go for. Or we could at least set the money aside, contingent upon them what, reaching a, giving us a satisfactory. I don't know the needs. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, I know they were trying to do uh, the t-shirt machine to uh, make themselves a little more self-sustaining. Right. Um, I, I think uh, I think one of our uh, starting points tonight would be to uh, determine that 
we had set a cap of five thousand uh, dollars for all the organizations and that we are we don't intend to give any one organization any more than five thousand dollars so i can throw it I, uh, you know i i can talk put out some here that i that i think that deserve Okay. Uh, the five thousand dollar funding, and that's making county care nets mm -hmm. that deserves that. And I think the Macon County Historical uh, Society uh, deserves the five thousand uh, dollars, regardless of how good the index of the loss is. He was running the last meeting, and uh, uh, also we talked about the library, but I believe that the Reading Roper program would qualify for the five thousand dollars and also the REACH organization. The REACH, the library, and that, that, care, care net? Yes. Now that's the ones that I, I consider. What about the Habitat for Humanity? Habitat for Humanity had, the, the way I looked at it, had three out of 11, uh, which would have, uh, in, Franklin. In, in Franklin, on the projects that they have on hold right now, and want to do, and that's not to say that they can do more, right. but uh, you know, I, if you did a little division there, that uh, made about two thousand dollars for for the people in Franklin, and, and it is a good organization, and, and one that, that certainly deserves some support. And uh, I'll just give you an indication: I put down thirty-five hundred dollars for that organization. I think what I listed down through here and the ones that I that I was going to support came to about thirty one thousand dollars. <laughs> there are some other organizations that are including county tax funded organizations that are picking up the slack on uh, rehabilitation, there's the world changes that come in here. Uh, there are a lot of organizations that are involved in, in home rehabilitation right now. And Habitat, I thought, the goal of it was to build houses, not the rehabilitation of houses. But I, I may be wrong, but I thought when it was fun, uh, formed, it was to build a house with, with sweat effort. I think they started a lot of efforts, too, going out and building handicap grants for uh, the weatherization. They do a fire well, weatherization. Yeah. The county's doing that too. Mm -hmm. so, I, don't know what the I was very fortunate with some of the work with the world changers, uh, as long as it was nothing but shot nails or current or all <laughs> electricity. Uh, I got to help with it. And they did a lot of exactly what Habitat's talking about. You know, it was all rehabilitation. Yeah, that's where the county supplies uh, all the materials. Or most of them. Some churches supply a lot of materials too, so I don't give them credit for it. But uh, I've worked for that organization since I remember them coming here. So, Merlin, you're suggesting that in your estimation, the CareNet, the Historical Society, the Library, and Reach should get the maximum amount that we that we are wanting to give her. That's right. Not what they asked for, but the right. maximum amount that we specified in there. Go for it. I think you'd be right. But if you read the fact that we have to reach, we have more problems today than we have. And I think that brings a problem because they deserve it. And, and with the library, even though it's out of town, and we've talked about they want it for the reading library, I think that part would be our part for it. Could we take like the four because everybody seems to be in agreement and say, okay, these four are getting five and then eliminate each and then we don't need two yet. We don't want to get there yet. I want to do this. No, I'm getting there, sis. Do I ever drive a meet now? I will. I can. I heard Steel Smith was bad for that. Okay. The Arts Council. Five hundred or somewhat less. I like the twenty five hundred. I've been down there and seen the amount of people that have risen to the town. Uh, 
I don't feel that's an unreasonable. If they were asking five thousand, probably I'd take it down to twenty. And they are doing. They do okay. so many things for children. Mm -hmm. They really do. Habitat. They hold them all apart. They hold them all apart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Habitat and, and the schools. And you want to stay with five, although they're not in possibility. I think there's so many habitats. I'd stay with five. There's so many people out there that would help. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 There's going to be a gap. I wonder yeah. about habitat is maybe they have turned away from the sweat equity model because anymore you can sweat a whole lot and not get a whole lot of equity. I don't know. But Berlin, you've done some cycling as yeah. far as your percentages and all. Have you got any idea what? You said 3,500 to me. I just threw that. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, Habitats did not come and make a presentation. Mm -hmm. Scott Stark Museum. I think we've got to give them most of the can because we can't, they've got to survive. If we, if we need to dictate it be given to another use and, and, and hold it in trust until we are satisfied of the use, I guarantee they can find something other than just operating expenses but it's a, it's a major part of our downtown, and I would hate to. I put 4,500, but I'd be willing to put 5,000. Like you say, the museum's really. Isn't the way that they arrived at 5125, wasn't that was what they asked for last year for half of the That's right. payment on the teacher? Right. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, I don't think we ought to buy t-shirt machines or, mm -hmm. or, or tow machines without them putting anything into it at all. I think uh, three thousand dollars would be uh, would be. A I'm really like them. Most of what they need. Well, the mayor says the designated then they have to tell us where they don't. They can't prove the difference. We could say five thousand, but we're not just going to hand it to them. Well, the t-shirt machine was purchased with anticipation of being able to pay for it by the t-shirts that they got. Apparently, they're not selling a lot of t-shirts around the price of high. Well, and I think that, um, I think they're in, in the right now. I think they're just, they They made these yeah. directions, but all I know is, is that I stand squarely behind the museum. The one of the museum didn't come. Why did they come? They, you know, what they came out there. Yeah, the jailhouse. The jailhouse. The jailhouse. Yeah. They're volunteers. And they just, I don't know, they just work. Okay. Angel Medical. I threw out a figure of $3,000. That's what I hit. That's what I get down. So we've got, we're, we're, we don't have anything to revoke, but we've got three on Angel Med, uh, 20, Arts, Arts Council 25. 25, five, right? Is that right? And Carinet, we, what did we decide? Did we decide anything? Five, 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 five on Carinet. Uh, Historical Society was talking five. Yes. Reach were talking five. Yeah. Library were talking five. Mm -hmm. And that puts us to the Scottish Park Museum. I, I really would hope we'd be talking about that. And then the Habitat. And that's the one where most of it is out in the county. If you did three for Habitat, would that give us 35? If we did five for the Scottish Park, subject to being having a judgment. Yeah, here we go. Let's try it again. Did you say three for half a time? Yeah. You get one. I've got 36,000. So we need to buy it. Right. 
So we need 10,000 somewhere. Is that right? So I got to calculate it. So you got to figure it out. She's learning how to figure. <laughs>
Well, we're here with whether or not we put a proviso that that this specifically precludes the uh, teacher of machine. Well, and if your caveat is just prove that this is going to not going to general expenses, but you don't say and not to the teacher of machine, we know what they're going to say right now. It's going to the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got a motion for $5,000. Do we have a second? I did. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed. Okay. <coughs> motion for the library, $5,000. Of course, this will be for the reading rover, right? Right. It's specific. Yeah. Rover and the bathroom. Can I make a motion? A second. Discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Reach five thousand dollars. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like the board to excuse me from this vote because I'm on the board of the Reach. Possibly not. I don't believe you can't board bench there, but why uh, can't I? Mm, did you get paid a salary by him? Oh, about two hundred thousand a year. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't get the I don't get paid, but I don't want anybody to think that there's a conflict of interest. I understand, but I think state law requires you to vote unless you can show a conflict. And is it only a financial free yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there is no danger of that. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're right. You have to put the vote. Okay. Only the motion for five on the reach. I so move. Okay. Motion. Second. Okay. All favor raise your hand. Motion for five for four next for boys down at the historical society. I should have said it that way. Somebody will vote no. <laughs> I'll make the motion. Bob, no vote second. second. All in favor, raise your hand. Yeah. Lake County Care Net, motion for $5,000. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor, raise your hand. Angel Medical Center, $3,000. I'll make a motion. Do a second? Second. All in favor, raise your hand. Any discussion? Any, any discussion? Yes. Uh, I'm going to vote against it because until they can show me that uh, their meetings are open, I don't think taxpayer money should be going into an organization. All right. That said, all in favor, raise your hand. All opposed? Passes. Arts Council, $2,500. Should I ask for more? You want to make a motion? No. Any second? Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Passes. That leaves about 6,500 in. Mm -hmm. What's next on the agenda, Sam? He lost it. We got anything to talk about the late break?